discussing because we're out of market. I just realized that. Good morning, everybody, and welcome to our last full day in Tokyo, Japan. And today we are going to be eating everything. We are starting today at a fish market that is near Ginza where we are staying. And then we're going to be heading to an area called Shinjuku where we're going to be eating ramen and conveyor belt sushi which is a huge thing here. And then we'll be ending the night in an area called Drunkard's Alley. I think that's the uh, English loose translation. We'll put the actual name of it right here. The outer market is kind of known for as like the fish market. So the fish get caught like a little bit further away from here every morning and then it gets brought to this market. One tip if you do come to the outer market is to get here early because we are here at like 11.15 a.m. and it is already packed. It is the morning here in Tokyo and none of us want to eat sushi before noon. So, we're, do, we're going to do the good old fashioned American breakfast and eat some steak and eggs, baby. This morning we're going, we are standing in line right now to get the egg part and then we're gonna move over to where the Kobe beef is. Not only are we doing steak and eggs, but we're doing A5 steak. I like you. What? What? So this was 4,000 yen, and the reason is, is because it is A5, which is the top of the line for like the beef standards. So in, U in America, like good for us is, is called USDA Prime, but in Japan they have like A1 through A5, and A5 is like, psh, just melts in your mouth. I've had it one time at a restaurant in New York, and I've been dreaming about it ever since, so. Wow. There it is. Wow. Steak and eggs. The meat just like disintegrates in your mouth. And the egg is, it's like a sweet omelet. Yeah. Sexy, sexy. I mean, you need to come here and try this. That was so delicious, it's going to be hard to top that. But now we're headed to a place called Tsukiji Masa. It's where they serve fish burgers. Because we need some kind of fish at a fish market. I think we found it. It's like hidden in this little back alleyway. And this looks amazing. It's kind of amazing how much TLC this one woman who is cooking everything made to order. We got the cod burger. It looks incredible. Okay, let's do it. Yummy, yummy, yummy. But the fish is so soft. The mayonnaise is really good with it. I didn't taste too much of the cheese, but the mayonnaise and the fried fish, and then the arugula that she puts on the bottom. Mm. And the bun, the bun, I don't know what this bun is, but it tastes like a, um, an English muffin. Oh. We are leaving the market. We are headed to Shinjuku, which is very far away. Welcome to Shinjuku. It was about a 30 minute metro from where we were at the fish market to Shinjuku, but we came here for one specific reason, and that is for conveyor belt sushi. You can find conveyor belt sushi like all over. But the reason we're going to this one specifically, because this specific conveyor belt sushi, after you finish a certain amount of plates, they let you play a game. So our goal is to eat whatever amount of plates we need to eat to play this game. So you walk into Kura, you go to this check-in counter, and you type in all of the information, but it's all in Japanese. It said it was a 55 minute wait. I mean, at least that's what Google Translate said. But then it gives you this little receipt with your number on it, and then there's a sign over here that like reads off the number. So when it's your turn, it'll read off the number, and then you can go sit down. I think we're up next, but one of my favorite things about waiting has been that they've been playing the graduation song like on repeat. So for like almost 30 minutes, the graduation song. 
So at these conveyor belt sushis, what I think we need to do is there's like an iPad or like a tablet right here and you order it on the tablet. But sometimes the like sushi will come around and you can also just grab the sushi from the conveyor belt. <laughs> I got a variety of things. I got two fish sushi, an egg sushi, and popcorn chicken. And what I love about the sushi here in Japan is they mix the wasabi within the rice. So it's not like a layer of wasabi, and it's usually like pretty perfect amount. I love green onions, I love tuna, I love sushi. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. All right, you need five plates to be able to play the game, and I have five plates to gonna play the game. Win me a gotcha pot. Stand for it. Oh! <laughs> you got so it's it. like a prize for eating five plates. But I guess the game plays itself and you don't always win, so it's like a lottery. And I won the lottery. One lucky Patreon will get this sent to their house. We are so stuffed, and I don't know how we're gonna do it, but off to ramen. So we made it to the ramen spot and the weather has turned. It started out as a super beautiful day and now we have like some snow flurries. But we are waiting in line at Tatsunoya in Shinjuku. We're still about maybe 30 minutes from maybe being inside. But there are two kinds of ramen. The traditional pork broth ramen and then another kind where you dip it in. The name of it's right here. So we're going to try both types of ramen to see which one we like best. I'm full. Like I'm so full. <laughs> So we want Wait, is that it? Oh no, yeah. Mm. Oh, okay, yeah. For the ramen, do you want the noodles to be the regular, soft or hard? Uh, regular. Regular, right? Yeah. Thank you. No problem. You wait in this line and she calls you in when it's your turn. And you go in and you purchase these tickets. It's like you order your food on this machine. And then the tickets pop out, you get your change, and then you come back outside. She'll come get you, get your ticket, your ramen ticket, and then I guess you just go in, like we're already ordered. So all you have to do is go in and sit down and you'll get your food. And apparently we heard that you really want to eat your food and then order a, some steamed rice at the end of the meal to finish off the ramen with the steamed rice. I guess that like blends all the flavors and brings it all together. Look how they put the egg in the spoon. Because we already ordered it, I love that it just is ready for us when we get in here. Like it, we were sitting for like 30 seconds before they brought it out to us. This was a little bit for the soup. Some of these ramen places, they give you bibs, but they didn't give us any bibs here, and I think we all need them. It's so warm and it's so cold out there. It's fatty. It has some cream to it. Like it's almost like super creamy. Just, it tastes like they've been cooking the pork in it for like days. Like that's how creamy and flavorful. And the noodles are like a lot smaller or like a lot thinner than the noodles that I've seen in other ramen places. But I kind of love them because they're a little al dente. Ooh. Nick is gonna love that so much. That is the most flavorful pork that I've had. It's almost like a barbecue taste to it. 
Mm. Alright, so we got two types of ramen, like I said earlier, and this one, you basically take the noodle, it's like a deconstructed ramen, and you take the noodles and you dip it into this like pork brine broth, it's got like soy sauce or something on top, but you just dip it, take a bite. Wow, but it tastes like super fatty bacon, like pork broth, delicious, but the noodles are cold, did not expect that. I think that might be the best ramen in Japan. Whew, so full. But we still have to go to Drunkard's Alley. We have one more thing to do to eat yakitori. That is one type of food that we have not eaten yet today. And we told you in the beginning, we're eating it all today. So tonight, we're gonna be in the Drunkard's Alley, which is also called the Shiboyo Yokocho. It is a super cool little yakitori place, food everywhere, beer stalls everywhere, and it's so fun. We have no idea which stall we're gonna stop at or what we're gonna eat, but we're just gonna kind of walk up and down and see what either sounds the best or looks the best or is very crowded. Many of these places are all written in Japanese, no English, so Google Translate coming in clutch. The big, the big beer. So we just ordered a bunch of things. We're not sure really what we ordered, but we think we know what we ordered. We're just gonna find out. Apparently they bring you the food as it comes out and you pay for it directly. I think maybe because it comes from a bunch of different restaurants in here. Oh, uh, uh, yes. Cuban lamb. 10 out of 10 recommend. That is spicy and delicious. Actually, spicy ketchup, very spicy. Pork belly. Wow. Just like melts in your mouth. Ooh. Winner, winner, chicken dinner. I think this is the miso cutlet. That tastes like a teriyaki, like miso teriyaki. Corn dog. Ooh, that is good. Kimchi gyoza. Never had gyozas like this. Like literally the dough is just like paper thin. So I hope you've enjoyed our food video today. We've been to all these different amazing cuisines here in Tokyo, Japan, but we're ending the night here in Drunkard's Alley. This place was kind of hard to find, but definitely a gem. And I'm so glad that we ended the night here. If you liked our video, please give it a thumbs up. And if you want to keep following our adventures, we have a ton of th things coming up in Southeast Asia. We're heading to Vietnam tomorrow. Thanks for joining us in Japan. We hope you liked our series. We've had so much fun. We cannot wait to come back. We'll see you on the go. And there are this guy. Oh my God. It's so good. Let's do this. Wow, it's busy. It's busy. We have made it to the ramen spot. The ramen spot is called Hold on. 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 Hold on.